Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I've been waiting for an hour for the Amazon guy to come and it finally get to work. I finally get to work. Hello. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. Hello and welcome to uh, whatever this is. I don't know, this looks like mess. Probably could have organized it better. <laughs> I just wanted to do a uh, repotting today. And most of these plants, all of these plants are from my Rudsta Hoya Hotel. I should show, I, I did get a few new Hoya babies uh, because I did a mass order with another woman uh, who owns a Hoya shop here in Europe, Hoya Fixation, Oksana. She's very kind, she's very sweet. I wanted to make an order from Thailand. Uh, however, it's, it's a very expensive process and it's kind of nice if you can find someone else who wants the same plant as you and you can order a certain size and you can split it between you and you don't have to pay so much. You know what I mean? I'm always for collaborating with other Hoya collectors and shop owners. So this is a beautiful one that I didn't order, but Oksana did all of these because she told me uh, if you want to take a little clipping of any of the plants that I ordered, please do. So basically I, I made this mass order and it arrived to me and I just kind of like did whatever I do when I get um, a mass order. Basically that entails like chopping the plants up completely, cutting off the roots because the roots are always totally fried and then rerooting them completely. And I also do some other things um, just to care for them very quickly, especially if they've been in the mail for so long and they were in the mail for a really long time. Usually it takes about a week for them to arrive, sometimes customs holds them for like three or four more days uh, just because they're so backed up. And so unfortunately these arrived uh, in mediocre condition, I will say. So this is AH036. It's really lovely. Um, I don't know if the camera will really focus on it, but you can see it just has a beautiful shape to the leaf. There's a bit of splash. I think it's a really lovely Hoya and I could not resist the urge, especially because she got a really big plant. Um, and so I, yeah, took a little cutting. Thank you, Alexander. <laughs> this little one is AH092. I just took, you know, the smallest cutting that I possibly could. Uh, and this really doesn't represent how beautiful that Hoya is. It's gorgeous and the leaves get much bigger than this, but I love that the veining is very pronounced. And I think that this one will grow so well under the grow lights that I have. Cause I, I often find that I'll order Hoyas from, you know, anyone and I'll put them under any of the grow lights that I have. Cause I, I have numerous types of grow lights and they will always become much more beautiful when they put out more leaves. I also took a weedle, a weedle baby cutting of Hoya Viola mini leaves. I love Hoya Viola. In fact, I have one in my Redsta uh, Hoya Hotel and I, I think I have some really nice B-roll of it. So I'll show you what it looks like, but it has really big leaves. I have to move it out of there soon because it's kind of outgrowing the space and the leaves have begun to burn a little bit because they're getting too close to the light. But I thought, oh my gosh, the mini version. So cute! Ah! So cute! Um, I also took the smallest cutting that I possibly could of her um, Hoya Callistophylla short leaf new. Her plant like, was very long and it had bigger leaves and the leaves have this beautiful splash. So I absolutely cannot wait to find out what this looks like in the end. And actually, um, she sent me a few of these Hoyas because well, we connected and uh, we just decided to do a little bit of a Hoya exchange. She had originally ordered a Hoya on my site, I think on my launch day back in July. And I sent her a few gifts because I, I know that she is, like I don't know her personally, but I know she's an avid collector. And so I sent her um, two very, very nice rare cuttings along with that package and she, you know, expressed her gratitude and was asking me how, like, 
sorry, I'm not repotting. <laughs> she was like, how can I repay you? And I was like, no, it's just, it just feels good. Especially on launch day. I gave a lot of gifts on launch day. She was kind enough to send me some absolutely stunning, beautiful Hoyas in exchange for some cuttings from my collection as well that she doesn't have. I love this community. I just love, I love the Hoya community. I think we should start with uh, Sigillatis Silver, AH001. It very clearly needs repotting. The roots are coming out of the bottom. This is such a beautiful Hoya. It's, it's just gorgeous. Miro from Daisy Plants, he just made a video about Hoyas that he was wrong about. And he didn't like them at first, but then he acquired them, and then suddenly he like fell in love with those Hoyas. I would say that Sigillatis is one of those Hoyas. I didn't find the leaf shape particularly interesting, but now that I see it in person and feel it, because it does have the underside of leaves feel like uh, velour or velvet. And the way that it sun stresses is just so beautiful. It turns this deep burgundy under highlight conditions. And yeah, I, in fact, I could probably sell a couple cuttings of this on my website soon, uh, hoyamygosh.com, but I've had a hard time cutting it. So <laughs> I've cut it for a select few. I've cut it for Miro and um, I think I cut it for Camilla from the Swedish Hoy Society. And I may have sent a cut, I don't remember who else. Select few people <laughs> gotten the cutting of this plant. But it is growing really well for me in the Red Star. So I have no doubt that I'll be able to um, provide some cuttings on my website pretty soon. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Uh, that was violent. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot a. Um, receptacle for the pond. I always recycle my pond. I grow like 99% of my Hoyas in pond. I have great success with that. I basically just use it as a, um, like an organic substitute. Where the hell is pot? Okay, it's over there. <laughs> so I'll plant it in pond in a little plastic pot and then I will put it in a cover pot and then when it dries out, I'll water it I'll let just a little bit of water pool in the bottom. I do have some self-watering pots uh, that Lechuza sent me. I shouldn't get into that now. I, I'll make a video about that in the future. But this is the way that I use it usually. I'm actually just gonna use this pot because I recycle all of my pond. So when I'm doing repottings like this, I'll just take all the excess, put it in here, and then I will boil that for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then I will put it on a tray, dry it out, and reuse it. And yes, that means that it is not fertilized. So I fertilize my Hoyas. I'm not gonna lie, I fertilize my Hoyas every single time I water them. Every single time. And I use Orchid Bloom over I use Orchid Focus uh, Bloom and Grow. That works so well for me since using that fertilizer, since switching to pond, using that fertilizer, <laughs> giving my Hoyas more light, they are in bloom all the time. I have a couple in bloom right now, and I just had a few others in bloom that I tried to cross pollinate. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm also sorry if you can hear the construction outside. The door is open, because otherwise the cats will ask me to get up and open the door like a million times. Like I said, I grow all of my Hoyas in pond, except for a select few like Hoya Serpens and Hoya Tengchongensis because they really require moist potting mix and I don't trust that I could ever keep the pond wet enough for them to grow well in it. Uh, they do fine, and I don't know why I'm stuttering. They do fine in my tent, uh, in my laundry room because that tent uh, is a little bit cooler than the other tent that's here in my living room. But they do great in there. And those are really the only two that I can think of. Uh, I, my Hoya fungi is still in organic mix, but it's because it just keeps blooming and blooming and blooming and blooming. So I want to change it to pond, but it just keeps blooming and it's wonderful. It's blooms last a really long time too. Like they last like two to three weeks. I was like maybe two weeks, maybe I'm exaggerating. And it, in the evening, the scent, ugh, it's 
so beautiful, it's so wonderful. To me, Hoya fungi, at least my clone, smells like roses and pesto. And I would like to say that I had a friend over, uh, I had a friend who lives in San Diego and she came to visit me. So she stayed here for two nights this past week. I didn't tell her anything. I just said, let me know what you think that Hoya smells like. And so she smelled it like a couple days, you know, and then it was, uh, cause it becomes more pungent at night. And she was like, I don't know. It reminds me of Rose. And I was like, yeah, a little bit. What do you think about pesto? <laughs> she was like, oh my God. That's it. It smells like pesto. It smells, it smells like pesto or like basil and rose. So I know I'm not crazy. She totally agreed. And that's what that thing smells like. When I'm repotting with pawn, I don't meticulously take off every little pumice, lava rock, and zeolite stone. It's okay to leave a few, even if I'm changing sizes. Because what I'm using today is the actual Lechuza Pond brand. And what this was originally planted in was my, um, sorry, my own mix that I, like I, sometimes I will buy all three types of rock in bulk. And so that's what this, it doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I have this piece of paper because I asked on Instagram a little while ago if anybody wants me to talk about anything. Cause then I'm just like, I'm not sure how I'm gonna fill the time. I'm not sure how I'm gonna, I'm not a very chatty person. And then I sit down and I'm like, the chattiest person. <laughs> really chatty. <laughs> the best part about this is that um, I used to keep chocolate protein powder in this container and I have washed it, but the it always smells like chocolate. It's really a nice experience. <laughs> Someone on Instagram did have a good question. They have numerous Hoyas that they've had for like three years and they've never bloomed. I think they said that one of them was Carnosa, one was perhaps Pubicolix uh, or Pubicarola. And um, I have to, I can't with the construction. I can't with the construction. I'm gonna lose my mind. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes. So this person has had three Hoyas, uh, pretty, you know, just like Carnosa, Pubicolix, if I recall correctly, for like three years and they've never bloomed. And I hear this a lot. And I will say that, you know, when I started my channel in 2018, I had um, started collecting Hoyas because I became obsessed with Hoyas very quickly. So this is actually a myth that I would like to address and I intended to address it in my previous video where I talked about Hoya myths and I totally forgot, but there is a common misconception that Hoyas need to mature in order to bloom. Like they won't bloom for, so, you know, some odd number of years, depending on the plant. Usually for Carnosa, people say like three to four years um, for other, I, you know, I don't know what they say about other ones. No, like, yes, some Hoyas do bloom faster than others. Some of them do develop peduncles very quickly. Some examples, Hoya Pandorata Splash from Vietnam peduncle on every single node, every single node, everything very quickly. It produces peduncles immediately. Uh, Hoya lobi also produces peduncles fairly quickly. And I don't know, let me think of another one. The fuck else do I have in bloom all the time? Maybe Hoya lacunosa, Hoya mirabilis. Uh, yeah. But here's what I will tell you that I have learned. It actually depends more on the atmosphere of the plant. It really, I promise you, I promise you that it really depends on the amount of light that that Hoya requires and the amount of humidity that you're providing it and the amount of fertilization and what type of fertilizer you're giving it because, you know, in the last year, I have learned so much about getting Hoyas to bloom. And I think that in my original Hoya care video that I must have made in, I think, 2018, when I first started really getting into Hoyas, I think I said that Hoyas thrive in low to medium light, and that's not true. There are a few Hoyas that I have in my collection 
that do prefer lower light levels. They're usually the very thin-leafed Hoyas, for example, Hoya evelinea, Hoya amicabilis, Hoya lobi burned very quickly when I put it in high light. So there are some Hoyas that will respond a bit poorly to high light conditions, and there are some Hoyas that will bloom even in medium light. Lacanosa for me, and, and uh, Hoya numelarioides, for example, have always been good bloomers, quote unquote, good bloomers, um, even in medium light. But it was when I started putting my plants in these grow tents and putting them uh, under the mother lights and my DIY Hoya wall under the uh, Soltec lights, blooming all the time. <laughs> like these always are blooming all the time. And it's clear to me because most Hoyas, which pot am I putting him in? I think this one. Oh, yeah, oh, this is Hoya Larissa. Sorry, I can't do two things at once, okay? I wanted to put them in the same pot. And the reason I forgot is that my piece of paper is on top of that pot. So, <laughs> let's try again. What was I saying? Oh, yes. Uh, it was when I, you know, I started regularly fertilizing my plants uh, with the Orchid Focus Bloom and Grow and put them under lights because they're, they're, most of them, not all, not all, most of them are epiphytes that grow in the tops of trees. They want light, like they, they need light, you know? Something that I noticed with my Hoya Carnosa Nova Ghost, I got it as just a, a little four leaf cutting and I put it in one of my grow tents under very high light and it started popping up peduncles left and right and I was like, that's surprising to me because I was always under the impression that Carnosa, in particular, has to um, mature to put out peduncles. And then I ended up putting my Hoya Fungi under some lights. Peduncle, 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 peduncle. After having this plant for years, peduncle, 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 peduncle. I could go on endlessly about the Hoyas that have just put out peduncle after peduncle after since being under the lights and being in high humidity conditions. What do people mean when they say that a plant needs to mature for years? Like what happens after three years? Nothing. It's just that people aren't providing the plants with enough light, humidity, nutrition, and they're not fulfilling the plant's needs and therefore it's not blooming. I, like I promise, that's it. Humidity definitely helps but light is super, super important. So yeah, I would say that if your plant, like if it's a Hoya Carnosa, if it's a Hoya Carnosa, or, oh, look at that, that looks so nice. When you put, oh, it's so pretty. If your Hoya isn't growing, you need to change the, or, sorry, if your Hoya isn't blooming, you need to change the conditions. Um, you know, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I have not had my plants for years and years and years and years, like many other people. Um, in this hobby, but these are the things that I've learned very quickly. And in order to promote flowering, really helpful to use a fertilizer uh, with higher phosphorus levels. I'll just kind of use that fertilizer periodically to try to promote uh, flowering in the plants, or as soon as I see a plant starting to bud up, I will only use the blooming fertilizer on that plant. Yeah, that's, that's about it. So yeah, I'm realizing that, yeah, probably I won't get through all of these in one sitting because this is going to turn into a two hour video because, you know, I always think that I'm not going to be chatty and then it'll just like explode into uh, chit chat. Look at this one. Look at this one. I couldn't believe that she sent this to me. I couldn't believe that she sent this to me. I was talking to Oksana for a little while. We were talking about, you know, our Hoya collections we both have. I gave her kind of an unrealistic list of Hoyas that I would like from her collection. And she surprised me because in that list was Hoya Polyneura Outer Variegated. So imagine my surprise. She gave me a list of Hoyas that she was going to send to me. I think she told me she was gonna send me like 10 Hoyas. Uh, no, she sent me like 14 or something. And this is the last one that I unwrapped. And I, 
Yeah, I just lost my mind. This is just, it's really hard to get a hold of. And to give this to someone just as a gift. I am very nervous, but I'm not, I'm not good with peat. I tend to overwater peat. <laughs> I'm scared. I don't wanna. <laughs> I shouldn't have done this on camera. <laughs> I'm so, I don't wanna um, hurt the plant or whatever root system it may have yet, but I know that I, I don't do well with um, peat. My nose is so itchy. <laughs> oh! That's my little polynoir out of here. I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so enthusiastic about it. She gave me a Mural Hoya, and I have mentioned Mural Hoyas a few times on my channel, and I've explained it before, these Hoyas are very unique and very special because they were collected by a Czech couple, Mirak and Alexandra. They traveled all throughout Southeast Asia and they collected specimens directly from nature. This is kind of like a no ID situation. It just has the ascension number, Miral, and then a number because that's that's their ascension number. It's like a mix up of their names, Mirak and Alexandra. Now I don't know uh, what species this belongs to, and I just really like to collect them. This is Miral 162 from Khao Luang Waterfall, and Oksana had it. After she received it, she realized she didn't find it as aesthetically pleasing as she thought she would, so uh, she sent it to me because she knows that I have a minor obsession with Miral Hoyas. So it was very kind of her to do that. It was a nice surprise. The next thing that I see, I see this all the time. People will, be, like, they'll see little white, uh, like, not pebbles, I don't know, like, little white spots that look like they're in webbing in their potty mix. And they'll freak out, and they'll think that it's some kind of, like, insect egg. You know, like a spider has laid a bunch of eggs in there. I don't know, who knows, the centipedes, like, what? Wow. The same thing happened to me. And I, I did make a video about it. I, I think it's still on my channel because I I freaked out. I got really scared. Her, those bug eggs. Oh my God. Oh my, sound the alarm. Save the cats. I thought that it had uh, bug eggs in it and I freaked out and I put it out on the patio or the balcony and I was like so freaked out and scared and then I started researching online and I eventually came across a reddit thread where somebody else had the same exact problem and it was just what is the word sacrophytic saprophytic sorry I always want to say sacrophytic saprophytic fungus so there are two things that you might see pop up three uh, you might see pop up um, especially in your organic mix. And that is one, kind of a white fuzzy mold looking situation on top. Again, that's a saprophytic fungus. Two, those little white dots. Again, saprophytic fungus. And there is a very specific mushroom that pops up all the time in house plants. And it even has the nickname Houseplant parasol. And it's a little yellow mushroom that'll pop up seemingly out of nowhere. And I constantly see people freaking out about it and saying, oh my god, oh my god, what do I do? Is it dangerous? Is it okay? No, it's totally fine. It's okay. You don't want to eat it. Don't eat it. If you have a dog or a cat or a child or anything that could possibly access it and might want to eat it, yeah, then it would yeah, it would be in your best interest to remove it from the pot. The reality is they're totally harmless. It doesn't affect the plant. It's not the same kind of fungus that can grow on plant leaves and destroy them or anything like that. It's a totally separate thing. It only exists in the potting mix. And it's really just feeding off of that delicious organic matter and breaking it down in your potting mix. But like I said, if there's a child or an animal in the household that might be susceptible to eating that, uh, you can pick them out, just break them off. They might come back again after some period of time because they have a cyclical lifestyle, uh, uh, life cycle, lifestyle, the cyclical lifestyle. Uh, they love Peloton. They have a cyclical lifestyle. <laughs> I said it 
again. <laughs> they might come back. Okay, so anyway, I think this video is long enough. I, like, I, I always uh, set out to repot a ton of plants <laughs> uh, because I always think that I won't have much to talk about and then I end up taking up like 45 minutes of your time. So this is another one that Oxana sent to me. It's so beautiful, but it has a really um, complicated name. Hoya species DML 5655B. IML, I think it's IML 98. I'll put it on the screen. Sorry that she had to um, fix it on the tag. It's a beautiful Hoya, really beautiful and I'm so happy to have it in my collection. I really love these Finlay Sony type Hoyas, especially the ones that have smaller leaves. Is there something else? Oh, you know what? <laughs> you know what? To tie all of this up with something that I think is just so silly. Oh, I mean, it's not silly. It's a valid question. It's just that the way that this question is posed is never detailed enough, <laughs> but I see it all the time in houseplant uh, groups on Facebook, what plants are best for the bathroom? Now, I understand why you would ask this question because the bathroom tends to be a humid spot. However, is there a window in your bathroom? My bathroom has no windows, so I could never grow a plant in my bathroom. Um, does it get a lot of sunlight? Is it a south facing <laughs> bathroom? How humid does it stay? <laughs> And like, there's just so many questions. So if you, if you were curious about what plants are best for your bathroom, one, if it's a humid environment, don't put succulents or cactus in your bathroom. They don't like that. They like really dry environments. They like a lot of sun. They like to dry out. Otherwise, everything else is pretty much free game. Like you can put pothos, hoyas, whatever, in your bathroom, as long as there's adequate light. And that's it. If your bathroom has no windows, do not, under any circumstances, put a plant in there. It's not gonna live, unless you have a grow light. So yeah, I just, I'm always boggled when I see that, where am I putting you? Were you in there? No. Where were we? <laughs> where were you? Oh, you were in a cup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at this root system. Oh, no, 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 no. He can't be in a cup anymore. Okay. Uh, this one's used though. I wanna, um, yep, there we go. Okay. Um, I'm just boggled by this question because it lacks, it lacks so many details. What does your bathroom look like? What, what kind of plants do you like? <laughs> it's just, I, I just find it really confusing. And I never even know how to answer it on Facebook because it's like, you can only answer that question with more questions. You can only say like, well, do you have a window or do you have girl lights in there? Or is it really humid? Or is it like, what, what, what where do you, are you in Arizona? Are you <laughs> in South Africa? Like, where are you? I think that's enough. I think that's enough for today. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe. You can support me on Patreon. And uh, don't forget to check out my best friend's channel, Baisy Plants. His name is Miro. Talks about Hoyas. Super good person. Very funny. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon. I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. My boy oh my gosh patrons, Carolyn Green, Christina Greengrass, Catherine and Frederick Bowman. My begonia buddies, Adam Banshoff, Alex Von Siebenthal, Anonymous Aardvark, Anne Margaret Moen, Casey Stranatopoulos, Charlie Krabby Cat, Erica Matsumoto, Aaron Mio, Fenner Lamb, Hannah Trankel, Jordan, Kristen Moore, Leah A, Michelle A, Michelle Sadlowski, Neptunian, Robin L. Jennings, Samantha, Sherry Kumar, Tisha McCann, Ula Umlaut, and Wendy Foreman. And my pothos pals, Abby Estes, Amanda, Brianna Phillips, Cece, Christina Wong, Claire Lynn, Elizabeth Mary, Elizabeth Valasquez, James Kopp, Cassandra Lewis, Kayla Vavra, Kelly Ash, Kelly Westover, Lexi Haynes, Lydia, Lisa Glandon, Natalie Kenda, Nicholas Curtis, Olga, Plant Girl 50 Asterisk, Brie, Plantelenia, Sabrina C, Shelly Everett, Steve A, Tina Halberg, Vertigris Dreams, Wan Yang Zeng, and Zen Simmer. Thank you guys so very much. Can't wait to see you next time.